Hello, this is Hero again. We're, we're still working on this Chinese Elm series. Um, it's been, I think, about three, maybe even four years in this container. And I'm going to service it. It may or may not go back in the same container. But it's coming along. So I'll go ahead and get it out of this container and see what we're going to do. See this? This was a big cut. And then I think I had a little stub and then trying to recreate a new apex. But first of all, what we're going to do is we'll work the roof flare first. See if there's anything that needs tending to, right? I think I've said before, a lot of times these are buried a little bit on the deep side for stability. And now it's fully recovered and very vigorous, so we'll get to the next stage. And that's kind of what I want try to emphasize, at least to my students, that uh, you don't start making bonsai right away. You make sure your material is developed sufficiently, then you start to actually do the styling. Well, I mean, rough styling is okay, but so many people just slap on the wire and pretend that it's almost done. No, it's not done that way. First of all, you know, we have those uh, cuts that need to heal. That means that it needs to grow vigorously without, uh, you know, being cut back and slowing down the healing process. So I always try to make sure that, you know, these things, see how it's rolling back? That means it's healed over because I took the time to let this grow vigorously. And to me, that's very important. That's the difference between an okay uh, bonsai and a great one. Make sure all your big wounds have time to heal, and you can't do that by chopping and then, you know, shaping like you typically do a bonsai. This type of root's not doing anything, so I'll go ahead and clean that up, and then this one is coming around, also not doing anything, so. That's not bad, not bad. This side here looks like we got some problems. One thing about Chinese homes, they're very vigorous. Well, it needs a lot of sun and feed it heavy during the recovery. So, you know, a lot of stages you tend to stress it out. <laughs> And, uh, okay, see, as I get this done, look how root flare starts to get bigger and bigger. So these surface roots were like the sacrifice branches. It was helping to fatten this area. So you should say thank you and cut it off. Oh, yeah. These are the permanent roots that we want to save. This is a little bit tougher call. I'm going to see if I could still keep it. Okay, so typically we go and make sure nothing is coiling. So what happens is if you wait too long, yeah, there's roots that hit the side and then start to coil around and then you have a tough time uh, dealing with it. Okay, so, oh yeah, this is not doing that. And then we'll check the bottom. Maybe it's only been two years. It's in pretty good shape, nothing coiling or 
matted or anything like that. So this one is in pretty good shape. So now, do I put it back in the same container? I could just put fresh soil on the bottom so that this will come almost flush to the top. But I think I'll put it in um, a different container that uh, seems to set off the, the tree better. And I found these and then I've been using it more and more. It's uh, equal to a five gallon squat, uh, the nursery pot. But see, it comes with a, a bowl taper down here, so you don't have a large amount of root to cut off when it's time to go in a bonsai pot. Plus, it looks good. Yeah, half the, the battle around here is searching for the right materials for what you're trying to accomplish. And in my case, I've been more interested in producing materials that people could uh, finish up. So this is getting towards the finish in terms of the bonsai, but not completely done. This still has plenty of work, so somebody could buy this and then spend another five to ten years and get it absolutely perfect. Plus, I think, see, the, the, the bottom of the root is original, and then I'm able to set it up high, so now you could really start to see the root flare. And what I've been doing is when I finish putting the soil, I leave a, a lip for ease of watering, but then I fill it with gra uh, lava rock, so it looks like it's flush, and it, it's all in the presentation. But still, this is towards the tail end of the training stage. It could also go into a mica pot if I had it, but this is one of the uh, solutions that I found that was satisfactory to me. So I'll get this thing. Well, I guess what we should do is go ahead and mark the front. When it's a round pot, sometimes you, you don't stay focused on the front, right? So I'm thinking probably about here should be the front. And then we call it tentative front because it'll change. Okay, so it's looking good. This area needs work because it's starting to bulge. And then up here, we're not going to be concerned too much because we're still trying to get this to fatten so there's a nice transition from here to here. I just took off this one here. That's because uh, if this is the front, that was the one that uh, had to go. And then over here now, this is going up. I could cut it off here for now, but maybe I could cut it off here or cut it off here or just leave it because I still want this area to fatten up. So, you know, these are all the decisions you have to do in your head. Or if you're making a video, you talk out loud. And then this one here is a good branch. Uh, it's been fairly well manage so I just had to clean it up. We're ending up with a bulge right here, right? Well, this growth here helped to make this heal. So I kept that, but now I could start to take some of this out so it won't ha ha end up with a big bulge. Same situation up here. There was all these things that came out and formed a bulge but it also helped to fatten that area. So now I just need to start to clean up. So all these get done in stages. Okay, well, I'm using this tool. 
So I could go down really deep, and when it heals over, it'd be flush, right? So when we're doing this bonsai, we have to think about the cut, what is going to look like as they start to heal, right? Okay, I think that should be fine. Now I gotta work this spot. Take it slow and easy. We don't wanna say oops. Yeah, that's one of those things when you're up on stage, something goes bad. Try not to say oops. I also, well, I, I did a number of presentations up on stage, but I always felt that it was a lousy way to teach because people can't see anything, right? Versus this format, one, I could cover a lot of people all over the world, I realized, plus the fact that I could bring the camera really close so you could see what I'm doing, right? And that's never been possible up on stage. So I'm, I got one of these days, I'll have to make sure I get one of these. But for now, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to end up with the bulge up there. And I'm still got too much stuff here. So. Sometimes, don't get too carried away trying to get rid of the bulge, then you find out that it can't recover because you gotta have this uh, bark and cambium layer where the cell division happens, right? So hopefully that'll work. Okay, when you get up here, uh, we have all kinds of branches, right? This one here is awfully big. We got plenty of small ones that we could control the girth so that it stays proportional to the location. And then our favorite subject, apex. Well, it looked like it got chopped over here. Uh, actually, well, a lot of times what we do is we let these shoot so that we could get caught up here. But now we're starting to work details so that we want uh, movement and taper. So I think I'm gonna go this way right here. And then these are too big for the area. But we have all these small things that is easy to control. So we'll stay with those and well, on the Chinese elm, I, I took a chance one time. I didn't like the location of the branch, so I took everything off the trunk, and it came back. And then that way you could start to control what it is you're trying to do. Okay, now I was sort of contemplating this. Well, I see this branch here, so what I'm gonna do is to cut this off and then I didn't like this one going up that way, so I'm gonna cut this off. See, so now that's why you need this uh, front marker. I think from this point, it's not bad. Uh, you know, we cut these kind of things off, right? But basically, uh, all the elements are in place. So another year or two, this should have healed over. I guess I should detail this out a little bit more. Okay, I think that's better. It's high, but not so high that uh, it'd be hard to water. I think I'm quite happy with this the way it came out. So I'll go ahead, feed it a little bit later and put it away. Okay, so this is Hero saying goodbye. I'll see you again real soon in another chapter.